Eight more Mac OS tips and tricks most people don't know about. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. So we have a fun one today. I've done these videos before where I kind of show you some tips and tricks built into Mac OS. Now, a lot of people always ask me, does Apple really have like a manual or something for all this stuff? And I haven't found one. If you have, definitely post it. Maybe some people have created them, but I want to show you some tips and tricks that I use kind of on a weekly basis. And they're only going to take just a few seconds to learn here. So just stay tuned. I'm just going to kind of rifle through all eight of them. And again, you can learn these in just a matter of seconds. And I think they're super useful and things that you might want to see. So stay tuned and let's just get into it. All right, here we go with number one on my screen here. So I have a folder open and in here I have just a sample file. This is a pages file, you can see it here. So I'm gonna go ahead and you know select the file and then I'm gonna right click, make sure you have right click enabled. I'm gonna go down to get info right there and I'm gonna click on that. So now we have this get info window open for this specific file. Inside of here, you're gonna see a couple bubbles in here. One of them says locked. So what I wanna do is I wanna select that like that. See how I just highlighted locked? Now watch what happens. So if I have that locked right there, I can go ahead and shut this down. Now this little file here is now locked. Now it doesn't mean it's completely locked, all right? But now what, look what happens now. If I wanna go ahead and delete this or move this to the trash, let's say I'm moving a whole bunch of files and this one happens to be one of them in a big bunch of them and I didn't realize it and I wanna keep it. If I go like this and I right click on it and I click move the trash, it's gonna give me a message. Look at this, item, newsletter example one is locked. Do you wanna move it anyway to the trash anyway? And I can continue doing that just by clicking continue. It's gonna move it or I can hit stop. But it's gonna give me that warning. And now it's not a fail safe obviously because if you have people that don't know what's going on, they might just say yes. But for you, as long as you, it gives you peace of mind that you're not just going to accidentally delete something that you didn't want to. All right, tip number two over here. So here's the exact same file. We're going to go ahead and right click on this again, click get info right there, and we're going to drag this back over here. So we're going to unlock this just for now. We unlocked it, all right? That's how you do that. Now this next one's called stationary pad, and nobody even has an idea what this thing is because it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But I'm going to go ahead and select this. And what does this do to this file? So now that we have this selected, watch what happens. So if I open up this file, this is a perfect example. Now if I'm going to go ahead and open this file in pages, you know, let's just say you open up a file and then you change it and then you save it and then you kind of lose all of your, your stuff from before, right? You I mean, obviously you have version control and stuff like that, but let's just say you don't want to really change a file. You want to keep the original at all times. So now that I have stationary pad selected over here, watch what happens when I open up this file. I'm going to double click on it. It automatically opens this up, but look at it. It automatically made a copy here. See it? And it's opening up the file as the copy. See right there? So now this is the copy. I didn't actually open the original file. I opened the copy. So if I do this again, let me just shut this down. If I open this, this original again, watch what happens. Watch right over here. It's going to create the file instantly. Watch what happens. Double click. It created that file right there, right there. And now I'm in the example two copy. I'm in this one. So I'm going to go ahead and shut that down. So when you actually have stationary pad open, it creates these kind of copies and it makes you, you know, edit the copies instead of the original so that you remember not to delete the original or edit the original of any way. It kind of gives you version control, another way of doing it. But that's what stationary lock or stationary pad, I'm sorry, stationary pad is for. And it's kind of cool because if you have a file you do not want to change ever, just use that, select that. And then anytime you open up a file, and you know you can go ahead and edit it, but then you can save it as something different. It's not gonna override the original, and I like it. All right, number three. Now this little thing used to frustrate me until I figured this one out. So you tell me if it did you too. It's very, very minor, but it does fix it. So take a look here. On my screen here, if you go to Safari, let's say, and let's say you wanna to go to a maximize the window, so you wanna to go to full screen, click on it, the menu bar disappears, right? So now if you wanna get back to the menu bar or see what's up there, you have to go way up here, click on it, it comes, kind of floats in. And if you wanna get out of this, you have to click here, but the menu bar disappears when you go to full screen, and I don't like that. So what I wanna do is I always wanna have the menu bar up there even when I go to full screen. That's very easy to fix here. So what you wanna do is you wanna to go to the Apple, the Apple icon, then system settings in here, so once we get in here, we're going to go all the way down here to Control Center right there. I'm going to click on Control Center. And then we're going to scroll all the way down here. And down here it says Automatically Hide and Show the Menu Bar. It says In Full Screen Only. What we want to do is we want to change that to Never. See right there? So it goes from In Full Screen Only to Never. Never's there. And then we're going to shut this down. Now what, ha now what happens, look at this. Now if I go ahead and maximize my window right up here, I'm going to go to Full Screen. It's going to give me the whole screen, but look at the menu stays up there. So now the menu is way up there, tiny. So now that I'm moving around, I have Full Screen on all the edges except the very, very top where it shows the menu. And for me, that's a lot better because I always have access to my menu then without double clicking. It's a small thing, but it helps me. 
All right, number four is actually a good one. I'm gonna show you exactly what this is in a second. Now, a lot of people know this exists. They don't know how to use it or they just don't think how to use it. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. Here's my screen here. We're gonna go up to the Apple icon up here and then we're gonna scroll down to system settings here again. And once you're in system settings, we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom here, keyboard. See it right there? So we're gonna click on keyboard. And this one's called text replacements. It's right here, a little button. So we're gonna click on that. So once you're in here, you have a couple, you know, you just have kind of a sample one in here, but I'm gonna go ahead and click on the plus symbol right there. Now what I wanna do is it says replace this with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do two of these little exclamation points like that because it's really easy to type and it's something that you would almost never type ever again, right? It's just something that you almost never type. So then I'm gonna replace that with, let's just say I have a, a really long email <laughs> at gmail.com, right? I have an email that I have to type out all the time and I'm sick of typing it. And all I wanna do is just hit those two exclamation points and it's gonna come up. So I just click add here really quickly, right? And then here it is, This re, you know, replace this with this, and I'm gonna click done. So I'm gonna go back into like a text document or even notes or something, and I'm gonna say, this is my email, and then instead of typing that whole huge email out, right, I'm just gonna hit the exclamation points twice, click enter, and there you go. It actually fills it right in your email address. Now, the reason this is good is it does that, I mean, obviously that saves you a little bit of time on your email address. I'll do it one more time, exclamation, exclamation, then enter, there it goes. But what you can do instead of this is you can have, you know, canned messages for maybe the end of emails or things that you actually use over and over again that are a little bit longer, bigger, like, you know, a paragraph or something that would actually help you out in the end of the day instead of having to type it over and over again. A lot of people do that at the end of, like they're typing emails at work and something, they always wanna say thank you very much, sincerely this, now you can do that through the email, I understand that, but maybe you have a whole bunch that you want to actually move into here and you can do it a little bit easier. So just ways to use it, I thought it was kind of cool. All right, number five, if you use Spotlight a lot, a lot of times it gives you a lot of good results, but maybe you don't want to see all those results all the time because some of them are just redundant, like fonts and stuff like that. Let me show you how to fix this. Here's my desktop. So if you open up Spotlight up here, let's just say we're typing up something. I'm just going to type in new, right? And uh, so obviously if I type in new, you get all this stuff in here in Spotlight and it keeps going and going and going and going and going and going. And it's going to give you all the information to have to do with new on your computer, including let's say fonts. And a lot of times fonts show up in here and like why in the world would I care about a font um, showing up when I'm doing a Spotlight search? Usually that's not that important. Sometimes I guess it could be, but let's just say, I'm just going to use that as an example in here, fonts. So that's a lot of information in there and sometimes you get lost in that information. So what you can do here is you click on the Apple icon, click on settings over here. And a lot of people just don't know this exists in here. So over here on this side of the screen, what you wanna look for is spotlight right here. And I'm gonna click on that. And then inside of here, there's all these check marks. And actually you can go in here and you can uncheck certain things that you don't wanna show up in the actual um, you know, spotlight, including fonts. So if I click there, fonts, next time I search for new, they're not gonna show up. Other things in here, you know, there's gonna be a whole bunch of different things that they list here. So you can basically uncheck the things you don't use that often and spotlight will be faster for you. It'll think faster and it won't get really messy with a huge long list of stuff if you just wanna search websites. I mean, you can cater it to however you wanna search. People just don't know that exists. All right, number six, if you're like me and you like to keep a very clean dock at the bo you know, bottom of Mac OS, there's the dock down there. You wanna keep it very clean and tidy, just the, just the apps you'd like to have there, you wanna have there. You don't want things showing up out of the blue. I'll show you how to fix that. So here's my desktop. We're gonna go down here. So this little middle column, so these are things that you have open currently, but right in this middle column are things that, you know, are gonna be individual apps that don't show up on this side that you recently opened up. And every time you open up something, let me just show you. So here we go. So I have these two apps sitting here. These are just recently opened apps, but we're gonna open up some Something different here. So if I go in here, for example, let's just scroll over here and we open up Black Magic Discs, you know, right here, Black Magic Speed Test. And let me just then shut that down. Now, if I go back to the dock, see it's now it's in over here and it just showed up there. So now it's ex extended my dock. So, you know, you always get things in there like you're saying, how do I get rid of all this stuff? I don't want it to always be in there. Obviously, you can click on it, right click on it, go up to options and then say remove from dock, right? You can do that. That's very easy. But another way to do this is actually a lot simpler that you never have to have them show up there. They'll just disappear and they'll never show up in your dock after you open up an application. Let me show you how. All right, so what you wanna do here is you wanna go up to the Apple icon, click on system settings. And then once in here, you wanna go, let's just find desktop and dock right there. We're gonna click on that. It's gonna open up this screen. And then right here, it says show suggested and recent apps in the dock. And you just have to uncheck that. See that? Uncheck it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. Now if I go back to my dock, look at that whole little column is missing now. And all the apps that were showing up that I recently opened are now gone. And it keeps this more streamlined down here. So it doesn't extend it like way bigger than it needs to be. It just keeps those, you know, obviously out of your dock. So every time you open up a secondary app or something, you just don't need it to be down there, right? You wanna just reopen it when you wanna reopen it. It doesn't need to be there. That's one way to fix it. 
All right, this next one's a very, very small one, but people always ask me, how do I get rid of this little icon here? And I'm gonna show you how. So if this bugs you, kind of bugs me. Again, if you wanna keep a clean menu bar at the top this time. So here we are, here's uh, Linus Tech Tips. You'll say you're watching this. And uh, up here, you're always gonna notice this now playing icon. See it here, and sometimes you get this, this pops up every once in a while. It says now playing, but I don't need it to be up here in my menu bar. I just don't like it there. So just an easy way to get rid of this is we're just gonna do the same thing. Go to system settings here. And once we're in system settings, we're gonna go down to control center right here. We're gonna click on that. And then right here where it says now playing, it's very, very simple. It says show when active. All I'm gonna do is go here, don't show in the menu bar, and watch what happens. I'm gonna put my, uh, cur or you'll, I'll put it up there in the menu bar when I click this. You can see how it just it went away up here. So it just removes it. So you're never gonna get that now playing icon up there. Again, it keeps things more tidy. It only puts things up there that you really want up there. And the now playing thing for me is not that important. It's just an extra icon to have up there. So that's how you turn it off. Okay, this next one's the quickest tip of them all. And if you're coming from Windows, and let's just say you're just starting on Mac, you probably don't know about this. Most other people probably do. But you like the Mac menu, or you like the Windows menu a little bit better than you like the Mac menu. Here's my cursor. So if I go down here, we all know that Launchpad's down here. You click on Launchpad, you can go ahead and launch your apps. You have to find them in here. Sometimes you have to go through a couple screens, which can be a pain. So just one tip for kind of Windows users, right? If you go back down here, instead of clicking on the actual Launchpad, just, well, you click on it, but you hold it down. Now watch what happens. It instantly opens up a menu, just like Windows, and then you can go to any of the apps, just with the scroll here, you can go to any of the apps, just click on them, and it's gonna, with one click, open up that app, and uh, you're golden, so there you go. So it's gonna, just gonna go ahead and shut that down. So you get the idea. So it turns, actually, the Mac menu into kind of a, a Windows-type menu, um, and uh, for all it's worth, I thought that would help people. Okay, that's about it for today. We're just going to keep this short. I only do a couple of these quick things just to show people so they remember them. When you do two, like 30 or 40 of them, nobody remembers any of them. So I hope this helps people. And we will talk to you in the next one. This week I got coming out hopefully some new Apple products that are coming, launching soon. And then we're also going to go through the news on the weekend like we always do. So subscribe to my channel. We got wonderful videos like seven. I got like 760 up there right now. And we do 130 a year all about Apple products and services. We'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.